Hello everybody, welcome back to a new Let's Play. We, As you can see on the screen, we are playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This will be the original uh, N64 version, and we're going to be attempting a three-heart run of this. Yes, yes. So, um, recently one of the uh, YouTubers that I follow, uh, Scouse Mouse, was playing through this, and some conversation came up regarding Three Heart Challenges of the Zelda series, so I decided let's go ahead and give it a shot ourselves. Uh, this is one of the ones that I have not attempted this yet. Unfortunately, it won't be a hero mode run because I don't have the recording equipment capable for um, 3DS recording. But we're going to go ahead and do this anyways. And as the previous games were, the... Uh, Rules are going to be as such. There's going to be no fairies, no potions, no weapon upgrades in any way, shape, or form. So basically, it's literally three hearts, we're done. No do-overs, no second chances. So let's go ahead and get into this. In the vast, deep forest of Hyrule, long have I served as the guardian spirit. I am known as the Deku Tree. The children of the forest, the Kokiri, live here with me. Each Kokiri has his or her own guardian fairy. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. <laughs> Get a blanket, Link. You sound cold. Ominous. Get out of the road, Link. There's a horse coming. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right. Now they. Navi, where art thou? Come hither. Oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words, the words of the Deku Tree, for I speak in third person. Dost thou sense it, the climate of evil descending upon this realm? Malevolent forces even now are mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long the Kokiri forest, the source of life, has stood as a barrier deterring outsiders and maintaining order of the world. Before this tremendous evil, power, even my power is, is nothing. It seems the time has come for the boy without the fairy to begin his journey. The youth whose destiny it is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Navi, go now, find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly. The fate of the Force, nay, the world depends upon thee. Now, there's an interesting little line in there regarding how the Force was intended to deter outsiders. Now, there's a running theory that the nat that regarding the nature of the Lost Woods itself. Now, the Lost Woods have been included in almost every game uh, in the series, if not every game in the series. And, um... There's a running fan theory that the actual forest was enchanted intentionally to get people to get lost and confused and turned around in there. And it's put on the border of Hyrule and Nether Kingdom. And the intention was that any invaders from that other kingdom would get lost in the woods and never be able to reach Hyrule. Effectively making it like a natural border. Hello. Hello, Link. Wake up. The great decoratory wants to talk to you. Link, get up. Hey, come on, can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? I'm up, I'm up. Please let me go. Five more minutes. Okay, I'm ready, let's go. You finally woke up. I'm Navi the Fairy. The Great Decker Tree asks me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. The Great Decker Tree has summoned you. So let's get going right now. Fine, little pushy, are we? 
Oh boy. Alright guys. So let's give this a shot. Now unfortunately I am uh, playing on a Wii U Pro Controller. I actually spent a little bit of time before I started this recording trying to see if the uh, GameCube adapter that they released with the Smash Super Smash Bros. worked on this, and apparently it does not, unfortunately. Yahoo! Hi, Link! Hi there, Saria! Oh, look at that! They're just putting some drawings on there. We're fighting some kind of giant dinosaur beast. Wow, a fairy? Finally, a fairy came to Link. Wow, it's great news. I'm so happy for you. Now you're a true Kokiri, Link. Is that right? The Great Deku Tree has summoned you. It's quite an honor to talk to the Great Deku Tree. I'll wait for you here. Get going. Go see the Great Deku Tree. Alright, Syria, later. Oh boy. Alright, now it's time to run around and collect money. Because, of course, before Maida will allow us in to see the tree, we need to have, I believe, 40 rupees before we can do anything else. There we go. There's the blue ruby. Nope. Okay, it's gonna be two more rupees here. There we go. So luckily they litter a bunch of random rupees around this area that we can pick up. And so we've got those ones there. Um, I believe Mido's house has a, some treasure chests. No, that's Saria's. Where's my? I think Mido's is the one that rocks in front of it. Let me go double check real quick. Because I remember there was a four. Yep, here we go. I think there were seven rupees in here total. No, 11. And the last one was just a heart piece, so we're not going to worry about that. Oh. Alright, so sadly, this is my second attempt at recording this. Uh, the first time I didn't really get too far, I got through the Deku Tree and defeated Queen Goma before I had I uh, looked at the recordings and there was an issue with them. Whoa. Let go. Let go. Stop looking at it, Link. Okay. Why aren't you... There we go. I have no clue why it wouldn't let me unlock on. But, um, apparently my uh, Elgato settings were set to record this at 60 frames per second, which obviously that's not what it's uh, playing at. So when I got to the recording, everything was just damaged beyond repair. So I ended up just scrapping it and came back to it a couple weeks later now that I figured out the issue. And we are ready to get going for real this time. Hopefully I got some of the kinks of the controls knocked out. It's just always weird trying to come back to a different button scheme. Because the, how they do it is the right stick is actually plays the role of the C buttons from the original N64 controller. So rather than having a button to press... Hold on, let's equip this. Okay. Eh, yeah, let's go ahead and save. Hiya! But instead of having a uh, button to press, it's with the directional, or the, yeah, one of these directional pads, or the right directional stick, whatever you want to call it. Don't worry. <laughs> I swear I know what I'm talking about. But uh, it was, it's a little bit weird to get used to it, because most of the time I play this, Nowadays, at least, on the 3DS with the HD remake, or I played it a lot on the uh, GameCube when they had that collection. Um, where is... there it is, okay. So hopefully, a lot of my uh, mistakes in this game aren't just due to the, the controller itself. I wish I had all the setups to knock out this game on that for the original controllers, but unfortunately that's not the case. Yay, we got 40 rupees! And anyways, if you guys never noticed, if you played Wind Waker, and I was referring to Fado, the, uh, I think it was the Earth Sage? Well, this right here is the Fado of this game. She's like, hee hee hee, you came up all the way here. You're a real man. Look, isn't this view pretty? 
can change your viewpoint with up, so you can look around the forest with... Yes, yes, I know, I know, thank you. Um, but apparently, originally, Fado here was supposed to be a wind sage, like the sage of wind, in Ocarina of Time itself. That's why the forest temple, the emblem on the platform you teleport to, actually was like a gust of wind that was a spiraling around. The part way through, they ended up scrapping it and it became, the assets they used became the forest temple as we know it now. But they never got rid of Fado from the game itself. So, um, when you become an adult later on, I believe they, you find her in the forest and then she just disappears. So in Wind Waker, they recalled the name and reused it as a sage. Yes, 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 I know. Thank, thank you, girl, I know how to use Z. Hello, little midget! Okay, let's get ourselves the Deku Shield. Now seriously, I'd imagine if this guy is so flipping short that he has an issue uh, looking over the shelf, he should probably get a bench or something. I mean, like, there's a little wood... Here, get one of these so you can look over all the time rather than constantly jumping. That is, of course, unless he thinks of it as a nice little leg workout. I mean, hopping all day would make my thighs burn. Alright. Hello there, Mido. If you want to see the great Deku tree, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Uh, what's that? You have a Deku shield? And what's that? Is that a Kokiri sword? Good grief. Well, even with all that stuff, a wimp is still just a wimp, huh? I, the great Mido, will never accept you as one of us. Shoot, how did you get to be the favorite of Suri and the great Deku tree? Huh? Crumble, crumble. Yeah, just move away. Move away. Hiya. Oh boy. Okay, so I think that's everything we're gonna give for right now. Oh, and uh, additional rules is I am not upgrading any of the capacities for like the uh, slingshot, quiver, bomb bags, or anything along those lines. I'm going to be doing this purely. As, to make Link as weak as physically possible. I've been playing this game for 20 years now. I actually got it when it first came out on the N64. Sorry, the cat was knocking stuff over. Oh, Navi, thou hast returned. Link, welcome. Listen carefully to the eye, the Deku Tree I am about to tell thee. Thy slumber these past moons must have been restless and full of nightmares. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sen sensitive to it. Verily, thou hast felt it. Link, time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need you to break the curse with your wisdom and courage. Dost thou have courage enough to undertake this task? Ah, uh, yep! Then enter, brave Link, and thou too, Navi. Navi the fairy, thou must aid Link. And Link, when Navi speaks, use up to listen well to her words of wisdom. Okay. So, this is going to be a first on my channel, but if you check up in the corner right now, I am fully throwing on a death counter. That is right. So we're going to be tracking it, unlike the Wind Waker three hard run I did, we can actually track it throughout the whole thing, and if there's any point in time when my uh, my talents at this game fail me miserably, you're going to hear this sound, Fatality. and it's going to mark every single death as we go through, and we're going to count them at the end, see how badly I do. Anyways, uh, this episode is going to be a little bit longer than the other ones, because I don't want to just have the first episode of me running around catching rupees and talking you're off. So we're going to head right into the Deku Tree and get moving. Okay. So for starters, let's go ahead... Actually, let's wait real quick. Okay. That's not what I was trying to do. Oh, that's right. 
they lunge twice at me. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So now we can replicate that across all the Deku Babas. Shut up, Navi. I don't need you. Okay, let's do our best to not accidentally smack those uh, Deku Nuts all over the place. Navi, shush. I know. Something's underneath the spider webs. Thank you for letting me know. Loop. Okay, so first and foremost, I find it interesting how quickly they give you the dungeon map. Literally, you just walk up a ladder, and boom, you get the map. There we go. Oh god, there's Skulltulas everywhere! Thank you. Thank you for letting me know I can climb up climb up the walls. Wee. Uh... You can open a door by standing in front of it and pressing A. Pay attention to what the action icon says. That's the blue icon at the top of the screen. Link is just sitting there like, what's a blue icon? What's a screen? What are you talking about? Hey, you. Forgive me, Master, if I was... If I give you a clue, will let me go? When you jump off a high cliff, if you hold forward, you will roll on the ground when you land and won't get hurt from the fall. I can't guarantee it will work, though, if the cliff's, like, really, really high. <laughs> well, try to be feeling bold. <laughs> kind of sounds like he was telling me to go kill myself and jump off a cliff, but... Yeah. So, yeah. This first dungeon is going to be very, uh... simplistic in terms of getting through it as a three-heart challenge, because... No matter what, if you're playing this game, you're gonna be doing it as a three-heart, because you're not gonna get a new heart piece before you finish. Yeah, I got a fairy slingshot. And again, one random room, and boom, we already got the dungeon item. Come on, skip through, skip through. Yes, I know how it all works. It always amuses me how Nintendo can take a game, start you off so it feels like it's such the simplest thing in the world, and then just ramp up the difficulty as time goes on to the point where you're crying yourself to sleep at night. Oh, that's right, this uh, dungeon had a boatload of... had a boatload of hearts just randomly put around chests instead of uh, money. I'm trying to decide if... actually, no, it won't matter. I was thinking of potentially getting the wallet upgrade, but I realized there's really nothing I need to buy in this game if I'm not upgrading or... Stuff like that. Okay, there's those two. And there we go. Let's get some seeds. Yay, Deku seeds. Woo! Oops, that's not at all what I wanted to do. Alright, so I'm trying to decide if I want to go through and get everything considering getting a compass in this dungeon is kind of pointless. And honestly, it kind of takes us out of our way to do so. But I think for the purpose of completionism, let's just go ahead and check out that room. Even though it's not really necessary, this. And of course, getting the gold school tool here is... Gold school tools is also kind of pointless, but slash it. There we go. Just because I want that. Whoa! Come on. Aha! I think this is just another heart piece too. It just feels wrong for me to walk by a skull tool and not pick up the heart pieces. Hiya! So these guys basically, if you wait till their neck is fully extended and you hit them, they'll spin up so you can get a Deku stick. But if you just smack them right away, they'll give you a seat right off the bat. Unless they are the type that start up in that upward position. 
Although, at the end of the day, in this game, you really only ever need one stick in the entire game. Due to the uh, fire exploit. More sticks is kind of pointless. Basically, if you grab it, light it up, light up the torch. Normally, the uh, stick would burn out, but if you swing your sword, it immediately puts it out. And allows you to keep the stick in your uh, inventory. So at the end of the day, you really have no need for anything. Nope. Or you have no need for more than one. Oops. Okay, perfect. Alright, so let's line up this jump. And go wee! Oh god! Aha! Alright, so we got two gold skatulas down here. Oh, don't hit me! Jerk. Hit it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna get you just because my completionism is telling me any skatula I see, I am going to grab. Now, I'm not gonna go out of my way and get all the ones like from the uh, patches of soil or around an area that I otherwise wouldn't go to, but if I see it right in front of me and I have the ability to grab it, I'm just going to grab it. Even when I'm doing these kind of runs, I have a problem. I'll admit it's first step is admitting you have a problem, but leaving collectibles behind is something that I find troublesome to deal with. Okay. Let's go ahead and burn this cob up away. I think there's just a heart in there, so I'm going to ignore it. Damn it. Nope. That one. Whee! Okay. Let the second half of the dungeon commence. Okay, I want to try something here. Nah, that doesn't really help. Alright, please forgive me, Master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. You'll never beat my brothers up ahead unless you punish them in the proper order. The order is 2, 3, 1. 23 is number 1. Do you think I'm a traitor? Yeah, kind of. You just told me how to, you know, like, kill your... or get to your queen's chamber to kill her. I'm actually curious how the Deku Scrubs came to be in the service of a giant spider. I mean, seriously, what? There has to be some kind of story there, right? Or maybe I'm just looking into it. Yes, I know I, I can dive. Thank you, Navi. Hiya! Whoop, back up, and down. Come to me, platform. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hiya! Hiya! Even though I know those spikes are not going to hit me, it just freaks me out every time. Oops. That was a complete mistake, but I'll accept it. Ooh, more seeds. Thank you. I want to max that out. Money, 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 money. You can stand next to this block and grab a hold of it with A while holding A. Push or pull it. If you stand next to the block and press A while pressing forward, you can climb on top of it. Pay attention to what the action icon says. Yep. I gotcha. Navi, thank you. Oh, grab it and go. Keep on pushing. There we go. And into here. You got no issues with you. And you. There we go. Perfect. Alright, good. Because I wanted to get more some more seeds before we move onwards. Okay, fire. 
you, and you. There we go. Okay, now technically what I can do here is run out to the room and then fight the little uh, spiderlings. But before you run in there, you can actually knock them off the ceiling, so you never have to fight them. It's just the aiming is a little bit touchy. You have to aim like right where the top of the egg sac touches the ceiling. Dang it. Nope. There we go, just like that. There we go, nice. Perfect. Now, for some reason, I don't know why... Actually, I do know why, because you're using a, uh, the right stick instead of an actual button. If you press it at the wrong angle, it'll assume you're trying to grab the other one. Like when I'm trying to get the hook sh uh, slingshot, it tries to pick up on the Deku stick, for example. Okay, so we just need that one. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave these cobwebs. There's no need to go back there until we get bombs. And even then, I think it's just a, um... I'm not sure if it's a heart piece or a gold school tool, but... There's really no point. Actually, no, it's a heart piece. I think the first three dun the, uh, child link dungeons give you three school tools full dungeon, and the adult ones give you five. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our shortcut. And we'll head down to fight Miss Queen Goma. Okay. We got our fire. We leap. And time to roll. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this. Come back up. There we go. Just so we can get a little bit more before we head in. Even though in here it's really not going to help us, but... Meh. Whatever. Come on. There's one. I'm just trying not to let the other ones hit me by accident. Missed. Come on. Come on, buddy, buddy. There we go. How did you know our secret? How irritating. It's so annoying that I'm going to reveal the secret of Queen Goma to you. In order to administer the coup de gras to Queen Goma, strike her with your sword while she's stunned. Oh, Queenie, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Let's do this, guys. Now, let's see if I can beat her like I normally do. Generally, she just never gets an attack off. Not even spawn her little spiderlings. She just gets killed before she gets a chance to do anything. But let's check and see if that works out. There she is, the giant armored arachnid. Parasitic armored arachnid Goma. Oh, I missed. Why aren't you targeting her? Okay. Wait for her to get over here. There we go. Hiya! 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 Back up and swing! Just like that. Perfect. She never stood a chance. You poor, poor spider. Bum, 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 bum. Ha, ha, ha. One of these di uh, dies, cheese. One of these days I'm going to figure out the exploit where you can literally uh, glitch back through this, open the door, and end up spawning at the end of the game. It's one of those speedrun strats you get when you uh, can beat the game in like 19 minutes or some crap like that. I honestly do not know how many times people tried random stuff like that before they figured it out. I mean, who honestly spends their time looking for random defects in the code like that? Anyways.
Thou hast verily, <clears throat> sorry, thou hast verily demonstrated thy courage. I knew that thou wast be able to carry out my wishes. Now I have yet more to tell ye. Wouldst thou listen? Ah, uh, sure. Now listen carefully. A wicked man of the desert casts this dreadful curse upon me. This evil man ceaselessly uses his vile sorcerer's powers in his search for the sacred realm that is connected to Hyrule. For it is in that sacred realm that one will find the divine relic of the Triforce, which contains the essence of the gods. Before time began, before spirits and life existed, three golden goddesses descended upon the chaos that was Hyrule. Din, the goddess of power. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom. And Furor, the goddess of courage. I've always wondered if it's Furor or Furori. No clue. And where does Hylia fit into all this? Was she before or after these three goddesses? Din. With her strong, flaming arms, she cultivated the land and created the Red Earth. Nehru poured her wisdom onto the earth and gave the spirit of law to the world. Theror, with her rich soul, produced all life forms would uphold the law. And a lot that really didn't either, but whatever. That's beyond the point. The three great goddesses, their labors completed, departed. And the golden sacred triangles remained at the point where the goddesses left the world. Since then, the sacred triangles have become the basis of our world's providence. And the resting place of the Triangles has become the Sacred Realm. Thou must never allow the desert of man in black armor to lay his hands upon the Sacred Triforce. Thou must never suffer that man with his evil heart to enter the Sacred Realm of Legend. The evil man who cast the Death Curse upon me and sapped my power. Because of that curse, my end is nigh. Though your valiant efforts to break the curse were successful, I was doomed before you started. Yes, I will pass away soon, but do not grieve for me. I have been able to tell you of these important matters. This is Hyrule's final hope. Link, go now to Hyrule Castle. There, thou wilt surely meet the Princess of Destiny. Take this stone with you. Stone that man wanted so much that he cast the curse upon me. Whoa! Is that pretty? Let's go pawn it off and make some quick cash. Let's go sell for rupees. Yeah! You got the Kokiri's Emerald. This is the spiritual stone of the forest, now entrusted to you by the Great Deku Tree. The future depends upon thee, Link. Thou art courageous. Navi the fairy, help Link to carry out my will. I entreat ye, Navi. Goodbye. And that is my best attempt at being dramatic. <laughs> oh god, no! He has such bushy eyebrows and mustache. Let's go to Hyrule Castle, Link. Goodbye, Great Deku Tree. Alright. Hi, Mido. Hey, Link, what did you do? The Great Deku Tree, did he die? How could you do a thing like that? It's all your fault. 
Yeah, I, I totally, it's my fault. I ran there, started spraying pesticides all over the place just to kill the, your guardian daddy spirit so I can rule over all of you Kokiri children. <laughs> totally. Anyways, guys, so that's about wraps it up for this first episode here. And unfortunately, I did take half a heart worth of damage. When did that happen? No clue. I'm gonna have to go ahead and take a look at that back when I'm editing to see where I took that damage. I thought I got away scot free, but whatever. Anyway, so uh, hopefully you all got a kick out of this new uh, format I'm trying out here. And it's gonna probably be an episode before we get to the next dungeon. Or maybe I'll just rush through it all and do one dungeon an episode for the starting part of it. I don't know. It depends on how long these last. Either way, I will see you in the next episode when we go ahead and head out of the Kokiri Forest. And head to Hyrule Castle to meet with the Princess of Destiny. So I'll see you all then. Later. Yeah.